Alrighty, this is a video to explain how to make a graph for this experiment. Um, what we've already done in the previous video is explain how to get linearized or transformed data. Now, here's our data down here. What we need to do is turn this into a graph. Excel can do this for us. What we do is we actually highlight just the numbers. Only the numbers is all you want it highlighted. The other thing you should know is whatever is in the left hand column will show up on the horizontal or bottom axis of your graph. Whatever is in the right hand column shows up on the vertical. Now there's ways to change it, but that's the default system in Excel, so it's a lot easier if you know this from scratch. So here we go. You highlight the numbers you want, you go up to Insert, the tab on the top, Insert. You scroll across and you find the Scatter button. Click on that, select the first one where the dots are all over the place, and there's your graph, it just popped up. You might want to expand it so it's the biggest your window can take, because we've got to do quite a few things to this graph. First off, this little thing series, you can right click, you can delete that, we don't need that. Now. Here's a tick list that I made up of things to remember to do. Here it is here. We just made the graph, so we have to turn on the grid lines. We have to label the axes. We have to turn on the line of best fit. Then we have to replace the variables in the aim. And finally, we get to print it and use it to write our conclusions. So here we go. First, to turn on the grid lines. Back to our graph. Here it is. Right now, we don't have many grid lines. The lines on the graph looks a little ugly. If you go to layout, at the very top. There's a tab for grid lines. So here you go. Your horizontal grid lines, if you turn on the minor ones, now you have a lot more. If you also go back to grid lines, and for the vertical one, turn on your minor grid lines. There you go. That easy. Next is the axes titles. Up here, also on the layout tab, is axes titles. So we'll give the horizontal axis a title showed up right there. If we type in the big box at the top of Excel, remember this is the left hand column's data, which is independent variable. So this means it's the distance marble rolled down ramp. And the little symbol is D and the units are in meters. If you hit enter, there it is on the bottom of your graph. Similarly, the axis titles, we can do the vertical axis. Choose the rotated title, and there it is on the side of your graph. This is the right hand column of the data. That's the time squared. So we type in time squared, and the symbol for that is a T with a little arrow button that you find above the 6, squared, and the units for that are in seconds. Little arrow button again, squared. Hit enter, and there it is. Now, we also need a title for our graph, so chart title gives you the title. I usually put it above the chart. So if you click on that, there it is there. Again, if you click in the white space in Excel, you can give it a title. Basically, most titles are the vertical axis versus the horizontal axis in physics. So, that equates to time squared versus distance rolled. And you can capitalize that for Hit that, there it is. Done. So we have all of that. The few other things we have to do is we have to turn on the line of best fit. If you select the dots, didn't really want to do that. I'll try again. So if you just select the dots and then you right click this little list comes up. On this list is add a trend line. That's what we want. So you select add trend line. Now, it should pop up with linear. Make sure it's linear. You don't want any of these others because for your experiment, after you've linearized the data, you want a linear line. You also want to select the second to last button down here, display equation on the chart. Once you do that, hit close. And go back and there it is. You now have a line on your dots. It's done the line of best fit for you. You can drag your equation up here. You can even drag your title off to the side to give you some space. And there's your equation. It's not perfect. It has the wrong variables in it. But it'll work for us. If you 
select the text in there, go to the home button, you can increase the size of the font so that it's actually easier to read. Okay, you might need to drag it back a bit. Now, two more things we have to do. We have to change the variables in our equation. There is no y in this experiment. There is no x in this experiment. What we had was time squared on the vertical axis. That's the y-axis. What we had was distance on the bottom axis. So you must replace those two variables. Now you can, again, you can do it by hand, or you can just type it in. So, finally, you want to print it. Now, how to print from Excel is you actually have to have your graph selected, like this. You go to the File tab, you go to Print, and there it is. That's the graph you want to print. Now, currently it's in the landscape orientation, right here. Occasionally it starts out in the portrait situation. You don't want that. You want a nice, happy, large graph. And if you print this, you're ready to write your conclusion. This graph with this equation pairs up with this equation right here, where we have t squared. There's a lot of stuff that you can calculate times d. Your graph has a t squared, a number, times d. Now granted, there's also this minus 0.2, but you can talk about all of this stuff in your conclusion and your discussion.